welcome to another episode of the Miles Offside Podcast, where we talk a little bit of football and a whole lot of nonsense. My name is Oscar Puente, also known as Footy from Afar, and with me, as always, he's number nine in your programs, but number one in your hearts. Pew, 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 pew. It's the quiz wizard, Chuck Bailey. And what's that in the sky? It's a bird. It's a plane. No. It's Super Producer Ian Stampson! Mortal Kombat! <laughs> We're back, boys! It's all three of us! If you can't tell, I'm very excited. Very have, excited. Have you, have you spoken to anyone since we last recorded? No, no, I haven't seen a single human being in the entire world. Not even Emily. She's just been giving me the cold shoulder in the apartment all Weird. Very strange. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Before, you, before we started recording, you told us not to interrupt that. Um, yeah. Probably would have done <laughs> you a favour. Number nine. Why am I number nine? Because you're a striker, just you're a star striker. Pew pew. Uh, oh, 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 pew pew pew. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, no worries. I don't know. I just, it was, I just thought it was weird. Like Ian, Ian's one. Like I got that. The whole Superman thing. Very good. Um, yeah, I just. That's, okay, yeah, I'm striker. Pew. It's a. Uh, have you never seen the replacements? The what? The movie, the replacements. Keanu Reeves, football, American no. football. Oh, worth watching. Anyway, that's from a uh, from that movie. He says he is number nine in your programs, but number one in your hearts. Ah. Oh. So, you're number one in our hearts, Chuck. Thanks, mate. More importantly, though, Ian, how are the fish? No. Tell us about the fish. We <laughs> demand fish talk. No, not having, not having this. No, I listened to when you recorded, and a lot of it was very, very good. I thought you were eloquent and lovely, and, and it was very well structured in my absence. Good job to the both of you. Um, I switched off in the fish chat and then didn't come back to the podcast for two days. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not interested. I'll, I'll switch. You and everyone else. I'll switch this off. So help me God. <laughs> he, he will walk away right uh, now. <laughs> I mean, no, I'll still sit here. I'll still be present for the entire time of recording, but you'll know that you won't be able to con- connect with me on Skype. But my recording will <laughs> still run. Fine, fine. No fish then. Ian, tell us about the asteroids. You said it's been nice lately with the, your next guy watching. There's and... just so much football. We haven't recorded in three days. And this is what you've got <laughs> three, three, the three of us. Sorry, three days? What? I haven't recorded the three of us together in fucking ages. This is where this is where we're going. Peterborough, ninety nine percent, ninety eight percent. Sorry for relegation. They're fucked. Oof. Posh Island is a victim of global warming. It's gone, <laughs> everyone, and that's it. Well, and yeah, but you know, we did the triple over Q- QPR, didn't we? So, and that's the real quiz. Everyone knows that. Plus, if Newcastle can escape from ninety something percent, then so can Posh. It's in. It's you know, it's not a hundred yet. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Except we've got no money and no transfer window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, Palace are in the fucking semis, Posh exist, and <laughs> Chelsea also still exist. This is good. These are good yeah, things. That's true, yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah, you've seriously changed your expectations from being a Chelsea fan very quickly. Just existence is now a win. That's, I mean, that's for, amazing. for the time being, it is. Yes, I was a little disappointed to go through in uh, all the different knockout competitions because literally every individual match could bankrupt Chelsea at this point. Here's hoping. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yep. Um, if you are joining us for the first time, thank you. We are very happy to have you. We are one American and two Brits, and we try to talk about the Premier League, but often get distracted. Um, if you are back, thank you. We love you. We appreciate it. Um, Patreon.com slash pod to join the fun on the Slack and debate questions like, would you rather live the next year or the next day over and over again? Uh, but we'll kick things off around here as we always do, and by always I mean sometimes, with our very famous segment... <clears throat> Rapid, rapid, rapid fire news. There's no news. Chuck, you're in the semifinals hey, of the fucking FA jingles. Cup, baby. Tell us, tell us. Oh, I was getting more excited for the live jingles being back. Um, Yeah, <laughs> semifinal. What a thing. Um, Everton are shit, aren't they? That was good. That Lampard guy, no good. No good. No good. No good. Um, <laughs> do four, not rate. 4-0. Uh, because it's a cup, we, they can't get relegated, but Everton do have to give us one of their trophies. Um, that's that's just the rules, guys. Uh, they conceded yeah. four goals. Uh, I was there. It was my, I took my daughter for, the first, for her first game. First game, a 4-0 home bad. victory. Oh. To get to the semis of the FA Cup, too, no mm. less. Like, she is your good luck charm and a half. My God. Yeah. yeah. 
well, what a poor starting experience based on what the rest of her Palace supporting life <laughs> will be. Um, I say that her favourite player was, uh, well, she she kept laughing and wanting to know where number seven was um, because he fell on the floor a lot. Um, and she kept asking if he was crying um, because his shirt was dirty. Um, and Richarlison is her favourite player. <laughs> I wasn't too happy about that, but, you know, when she kept asking, is he crying? Is he crying? Is he okay? I thought that was just the the slyest dig. Shouting it viciously from the sidelines. Horrifically. She did stick her middle finger up at a man next to her. Not even a joke. Don't even know where that's come from. She's never done it before in her life. She stuck her middle finger up at a bloke. Maybe she saw someone in the stands a few rows away. You know. Yeah. A prick owes owes her money. Um, It was... (laughs) I mean, it was on TV as well, so I think a few people were messaging me um, that they were watching it. I know there was a few things on the Slack. And yeah, for about 20 minutes, Everton were really good. Um, unfortunately for Everton, there are 90 minutes in a standard match of football. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we just, just fucking ruined them. There could have been more goals at the end, like the third and fourth goal, time just stopped for all of them. Um, and, and we got two tap-ins, basically, one from Zaha, one from Will Hughes. Everton fans left in their masses at the third goal. Um, I you don't would, know, wouldn't you? you? I don't would. know if away fans are allowed outside of the ground before before the final whistle. <laughs> I don't know what happens there um, in general. Um, and a lot of them were swearing very aggressively at the end of the players uh, at the players, <laughs> and the players wouldn't go very close to them when they were thanking them, apologising, begging. I don't, I don't really know what you call it. They were. Yeah, yeah, not best pleased, um, but their their club is an absolute fucking dumpster. Um, yeah, the the famous friendly vibes at Everton and the Goodison Park crowd are gonna be they're gonna be used up if they're not already very mm-hmm. quickly. I think they're gone. I think I think, I think those, those vibes are completely gone. I mean, Lampard even even in his post match for this one, he he wasn't able to do his. But seriously, you know his his turn of emotion <laughs> in it. There was. <laughs> There was just no joy in him. There were no jokes or, or humour to be had because they are firmly in a relegation fight. That's it. You know, 538 has them at 32% for relegation. Um, that's big. You know, Burnley are more than them on 51. Uh, and then you've got Leeds on 23. So that's your kind of last three with Watford and Norwich on 83 and more than 99%. Um, percent. <laughs> they, didn't need, they, they didn't need that game. Uh, I'm not surprised because it was off the back of the Newcastle game that was, what, two and a half days earlier, basically. It was Thursday evening into Sunday morning was their turnaround for this game. So I'm not surprised that they just had nothing, but they showed no fight, no energy to win second balls. No, we, we were just picking... No no bollocks, according to Lampard. No bollocks. <laughs> no bollocks. I mean, it's six weeks into his, his tenure there and... He's... Is it six weeks? Yeah, six seven weeks. It was the first of first of February, I think. He was, wasn't it? Right near the end of the transfer window. So, and he's he's saying that his players haven't got the bollocks to to play and to perform at the level required to play a FA Cup quarter final. It's it's happened remarkably quickly that he's got to that point. I mean, he came into a dumpster fire that he never should have come into in the first place, and it and now he's getting burned, and he's like, this dumpster fire is not as fun as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm beginning to think, you know, that, that his ego must be just ridiculously huge. Mm. I mean, best midfielder of all time, of course it is. Yeah, it but as a be. player, yeah, player is one thing. Like, he's not, you, you know, well, maybe he should fucking sub himself on or something. I don't yeah. know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 but, you know, people laugh about the taking Derby from sixth to sixth thing, but... I do laugh about that, yes. We yes, do, I but do. look at the yeah. championship. Look at the championship, <laughs> how quickly it is. And, and you, you've experienced this at the minute, how quick it, it can happen that you just fall like a stone because of yeah. the amount, the, the re- relentlessness of that league, or you get people that surge up the league. So actually mm. keeping that form of consistency in that league could be all right. I don't think he could really turn down the Chelsea job at the time. No, and he did a good job that first year. He did a really good yeah. job that first year in extraordinarily difficult circumstances. I, th- I think it was a perfectly serviceable <laughs> job. I don't really think they could have uh, expected much more. Um, then it, you know, it went a bit bad, and it, it, he now apparently must see himself as some sort of problem solver firefighter, which is ridiculous. Everton are were f- completely fucked. Um, anyway, the the amount they spent on players is uh, over the the last few years is is ridiculous. It's you know often quoted the half a billion pounds worth of players. Um, they lost Ancelotti under quite 
rapid circumstances, but just it's, it's just abject they're just fucking abject it's it's ridiculous how bad they they've gone and how quickly you know at the start of the season we were saying oh they can possibly push for europe we, we were before obviously ancelotti went and and then james rodriguez decided to stop playing for them um pretending like he didn't even know who they were playing the next week while he was still on <laughs> holiday and the season had started um remember that and that was weird <laughs> and yeah now it's just you know they're they're flirting with relegation uh, in in quite a, a serious manner, and I don't see any promise or or uh, of this uh, just turning around, and it and it's so such a weird situation to be in, but that's but that's what it is. And whilst the the blame doesn't solely lay at Lampard's feet, like he's there to fix it, and so if he's not fixing it, like he is part of the problem. Oh yeah, he's he's not done a good job, but. I don't know who could have. That's kind of my take. What? Well, whoever. Fuck. Fuck my Lampard take. You guys are going so British on this. Let's not focus on the negative. Chuck Palace <laughs> in a semi fucking final. You should be gloating. You should be gl- glowing, beaming, ball of sunlight. Let's set the context. How about this? For my American friends, I had a few people text me, be like, "How big of a deal is it that Palace have made the semi final? Like, is that actually a big deal?" Yeah, uh, like, we got to the, the final a couple of years ago. Come on, guys. so <laughs> so you guys have never won the top division, right? Your best finish ever is third place, and then you've made the FA Cup final twice, but never mm-hmm. won it. That's what I looked up. So it's so like, how are you feeling? Like just making it to a semi final, playing at Wembley. That's got to be a big deal, right? Like Wembley's always good. Wembley's always great in whatever form. I think your team finds it. Um, I'm sure you know teams like Man City. They get a bit bored of it going there every fucking year, uh, multiple times a year even. And um, it's, I think it's when you you have to take the season as a context as uh, as a whole of where we were at the start of the year, where everyone thought we would be, what everyone was saying about Vieira, about the rebuild, about losing Hodgson, about us struggling and blah, 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 blah. And right now we're in 12th in the Premier League. We've got decent fixtures until the end of the season. And we're in the final four with Chelsea, Liverpool and Man City. Arguably, you know, we are in now the best four teams in the country. It's just facts, guys. <laughs> just facts in a knockout competition. That's how linear knockout football works. <laughs> This is how it works. And we're in the final four of the, of the FA Cup. And before with Hodgson, we apparently had de- defensive solidity. Um, and we also hadn't scored a goal in a cup competition for like two, three and a half seasons, I believe. Um, oh. Before this this season. And so it, it's a ridiculously successful season by any metric you want. Um, especially considering all of the narrative that that we had from everywhere, from fans, from pundits, uh, experts, um, news outlets, whatever whatever you want to to say, uh, friends, um, family, apparently, um, that, that you you know we're going down, we're in trouble, and and not realizing that there was promise there to be had, and and that we have built on that and done exceptionally well. Add to that, you know the the way our players have built and developed with you know Eze coming back Elise being sensational Zaha adapting his game Mateta finding form uh, Edward being sensational when he comes in Gallagher being amazing and that we now after today's announcements we have three players in the the latest England squad um, mm. they are all 22 and under and I count for the purposes of that I count Gallagher as a Palace player because he's earned that call up whilst at Palace that's not something we've we've seen in previous times. I know there has been a bit of a a shift from Southgate, and he is trying a few different players, but so much so over history, it hasn't mattered unless you've played for one of the big clubs. You look at Aaron Wambasaka. Wambasaka was amazing for us before he went to Man United. Didn't get a call up, and then the first international window after he moves gets his call up. Um, and so for us to have Tyrant Mitchell, Mark Gerhi, and now Con- and Conor Gallagher as well. Um, getting called up, e- even if it is due to injuries or whatever, is just a huge, huge kind of statement of what Patrick Vieira and the club have been able to create this year. Um, and I only see it as a starting point to well, to go this further is it. and develop. This is something I was going to ask you because obviously you saw the game live, which gives you a better perspective, uh, obviously, than, than seeing it uh, on television. And this was the first time that he's uh, Vieira's been able to play Eze, Gallagher, Elise, Zaha and Mateta all together. Yeah. Like you say, not, not even with Edouard's sort of starting or anything. Mm-hmm. But that's a, that's a front five that we've not seen together yet. 
No, we had, they, and they, they were making a big thing of that in in the media as well. I heard that mentioned a few times, and yeah. you know, apart from Zaha, they're all what under twenty four, I think. Yeah. Um, which, when you consider last year, we had the oldest team in the league um, by average age, and then also, you know, our centre backs. I think Joachim Anderson's twenty four. Uh, Gare, he's twenty one. Tyrek Mitchell's twenty one, twenty two. You know, it was just such a youthful team, but also a, a quality team. You know, and I am conscious about this then becoming the the Palace show, which isn't necessarily that exciting for everyone listening. Um, but fuck you. Um, but <laughs> it, you know, apart from the first fifteen twenty minutes, and Everton did have their chances. Then it was just we were playing it round from the back, and then when we decided to shift and go long, you know, we were getting on the second balls. We scored from our first attack basically, um, which was from the two corners, and and it was well worked. Um, to score from on them, and again a breakaway goal, and then the other two. It was just, it was just constant, relentless pressure, um, and and you know, getting to see Eze running with the ball at his feet again, beating players, uh, using those. That skills, must have getting... been delightful to see live. Oh, uh, it's huge because the guy, you know, Eze's first season where we all saw what he was about was during COVID, so no, he had no fans there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he he ruptured his Achilles right towards the end of that season. So even when the fans came back again, he didn't get then the chance to to have that. So, you know, the the response he gets is is huge because he's he's just phenomenal. Michael Elise is, I, I mean, he's only been called up to France under twenty ones um, for this international break, but it, you know, whoever he goes to or whoever gets him, it's just going to be sensational. And who knows what's going to happen with Zaha now with the team in this sort of position? Um, but it really feels like if. Now, finally, like if he did decide to go or we sold him this season for whatever money we did, then, you know, we're in a decent enough place and I have faith in the team, to, in, the, in the club and to, to, to replace that. But yeah, it's just, just good things, just fucking good things. If, and it feels really, it does feel really, really good. So let's, uh, let's round off the conversation here then. Dare to dream? Dream of? Fucking FA Cup. Here's the, here's the thing. As we look at it today, just looking at pure facts, in in the run up to the semi final, uh, between now and then, we have two games to play. Chelsea have four. Um, mm-hmm. Two of two of Chelsea's four games are Champions League clashes against Real Madrid, uh, which are big games, and they play away at the Bernabeu. Just uh, I think it's three or four days before. So mm-hmm. you know, I said when we played Chelsea last time. And they might be hitchhiking there. We're not sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who fucking knows? Uh, I, it, it's you know I, we played Chelsea just after the Club World Cup, but you know we played the same amount of teams uh, games in that time. So y- you know that was kind of a good opportunity as as much as it, it could be. And I, and I think again it's the same. However, you look at Thomas Tuchel's um, history in cup competitions since he's joined Chelsea. Yeah. FA Cup final last year, Champions League winners last year, Carabao Cup finalists this year, um, FA Cup semi finalists this year, and uh, Champions League quarter finalists. Like he's going, he he knows how to manage cups, and Chelsea obviously have a have the have the squad to do it. Um, obviously, four games is a long time, and who knows probably out of the three we did probably get the best draw right on paper at the minute mm-hmm. Liverpool- oh absolutely yeah no, no no that's not even remotely a question will Chelsea be able to give tickets away to their fans for free uh, to be able to fill up the seats <laughs> will the FA stand firm on the current stances of sanctions and not being able to have fans in there to make a political no. point or will, or will they say oh here comes Ian the, uh, the media cynic of course um, <laughs> correct <laughs> probably in this case will they want to put on a something that will be televised with a third of a stadium empty <laughs> yeah because of the current situation you know i have no source for this but i think they're just going to put them on general sale to the public that's my guess is so that chelsea don't have anything the money goes to like i don't know the fa and the running of wembley or whatever but they'll sell them to neutrals probably that's my guess it's usually about 30 because wembley's 90 i think you get about thirty-two thousand for each team and the rest go to corporate or whatever other bollocks they want to do. Um, that's usually what we have, I think, for, for FA Cup. So who knows what happens there, but it's it's knockout football. It's it's one shot. Who knows what could happen? Um, and it's good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get a ticket almost certainly and go. I've never seen Palace lose at Wembley um, in <laughs> four times, three times. I've been there. You go. Um, two promotions and a and an FA Cup semi final win. So that might be a good omen. Um, but if not, 
you know, we, we had a fairly easy ride to get to the semi-finals, not going to lie, but you only get who you're drawn against. And the last time we played Chelsea, it was very, very late in the game that you managed to get, you know, ZH got the winner like 80 something plus minutes. So it's not unthinkable and it would be ridiculous. And then if we get City in the final, then we're fucking winning. It's easy, isn't it? <laughs> it's fucking easy. Easy, lads. Four points, two clean sheets. Thank you very much. Bald fraud. Yes. So that's all um, a lot of not answering the question. Dare to dream. Yes or no. In your cold little dead heart, do you dare to dream even a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Good. Okay. I think so. Good. Good, good, good. I think odds are against us, obviously. <laughs> then there would still be the small matter of either Man City or, and Liverpool <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Th- This is, you know, th- but like I said, they've, they've doctored this. They've scammed it so that the best four teams are the final four teams, guys. <laughs> That's just you how joke. it works. You joke, but there are eight teams that have a positive expected goal difference per 90 and you are one of them. In the world. So, you know, maybe not top four, but top eight for sure in the league this year. It's still nine games. Deserved. We're above Deserved. Brighton as well. Poor unlucky Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bit. I'm rooting for you, for the record, because one, Chelsea don't need extra games, genuinely. But also, we've had the FA Cup. I've seen them win the FA Cup many times now as a fan. I want you to fucking have it. Come on, Palace. I'm like fully... Palace in this FA Cup run. <laughs> Not what I expected at all. He did it. To be fair, he did it. He did it last year in the final with Leicester. This year, like I guess we can switch to Chelsea for a little bit. This year it would obviously be really nice to get the emotional boost of a cup, whether it be the Champions League or the FA Cup, and then have it frozen in a bank account. No one's sure, allowed to touch whatever. it. Sure, whatever. You know, something to celebrate <laughs> would be nice. I'll yeah. say that. So you would think I'd be going for Chelsea, and I'm going all in for Chelsea on the Champions League. We got Real Madrid, suck it. We fucking smacked them down two in a row last year, back to back, just stifled them to nothing. I think we can do it again this year. We got we got a real chance. We got a real chance. Um, and then we're looking at City in the semi, and we know what Tuchel can do to Pep. We done seen that. Uh, and then you're in the final, and who knows? So I'm I'm daring to dream very much with Chelsea in the Champions League, although I haven't I since know. before the season. So I don't know, Karim Benzema, uh, they, be fearful. He made. He scored a beautiful goal against us a last year. Bloody hat trick, uh, knocked PSG out, which led to PSG booing Neymar and Messi on every touch yep. and pre-game <laughs> and after game in their three 0 win against Bordeaux in the following game. Uh, ungrateful bastard! Old money, honestly. old money beats new money. Um, you know, but then Real lost to Barca four 0 at the weekend. So what is football? Who what, knows? What is football? Real are not good. That's what it is. There are four, there are four good teams in Europe: the Chelsea, Liverpool, City, and Bayern. I was so oh. sure he was going to say Palace. I, was so I really sure. thought he was as well. <laughs> Bayern. Uh, I'm saying right now, Bayern don't win the Champions League. It does not happen. No, City are winning it. They're finally getting it this year. They have to, surely. No, they won't. Chelsea Chelsea are going to win it again. Uh... Chelsea are going to win it again, but they get none of the money. <laughs> fine, I don't care. That's or fine. Champions League next year because they're expelled as from As long as we get to put our name on the trophy, that's all I care about right now. Oh my God, Liver- I will trade Liverpool winning the title for Chelsea to win the Champions League. That is a devil's deal that I'm willing to make. City lose the title to Liverpool dramatically late in the season and... City lose to us in the Champions League, so they get nothing. I'll take that deal, even if it is Liverpool that wins the title. Maybe. I mean, you know, we 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 talk about Liverpool, and um, we all said the title race wasn't on. Sixty two percent, sixty two percent to thirty eight percent now. Yeah, that that was a take that was cold mm, seven minutes after we stopped recording. I think that's the the shortest length of take that was before it went ice cold. Yeah, well, that's what Palace do to you. Um, yeah. Bold yeah, yeah, yeah. fraud. Yeah, race on. Hands up, I got that one wrong. This race is like genuinely on now. I think we really have to own how down on Liverpool we were at the start of the year. I believe a certain stats-based person was saying about how all of their front three wouldn't work and they'd all be like injured and corrupted. and Old, just old. I just said they were going to fall off the age curve, yeah. Which, for the record, one of them did. They just found a Jota instead. No, I wasn't I, I, yeah. wrong that one of them would fall off, but it didn't end up mattering, which is insane. God, I hope we get run like Liverpool. Someone buy us and then run us like Liverpool, please. If you have money and you're listening to this. You might get a couple of Palace owners, apparently. <laughs> they yeah, they might be in the, uh, in the hat. They're part of a consortium. Yeah. Which one? Blit- Blitzer and Harris? Yeah. Yeah. Is it 
the seventy sixers owners. Oh, yeah. gutted. They're, yeah, they're yeah, the yeah. shit. They're the shit American owners we have. <laughs> Unlucky. Yeah. They hate spending a fucking penny, mate. <laughs> nope. They're part of a consortium. They're gonna sell their shot, their uh, stock in you, and turn it into us, maybe. If they're, but they're like in fifth place for the bids or whatever. Oh, and John Terry's involved in one group as well. No, that one fell apart. I think that one's out. Is that because? Is that because all his NFTs, the the arse fell well, out of it? Well, that one was linked with the fact that they could only raise ten percent of the money needed, and also they were going to do some fan token crypto shit. It and it's like uh that worked really well for you terry in the past doesn't it that's, yeah that's... well he, maybe he thought the racism was the problem and it's like no both of those things are the problem no one wants your crypto john terry <laughs> just him just him is him is the problem it was the opposite of king midas <laughs> frank lampard you know yeah frank lampard very good no i think we're gonna get bought by the cubs owners i think it's gonna be the rickets which they're very problematic as a family for racist reasons look up all about that but I think they run a team pretty well. And I think that there are a lot of parallels between the Cubs and Chelsea. So that would be pretty nice. I don't know. Sports watching in a different form. Let's have that. Um, <laughs> yeah, Liverpool Liverpool beat Arsenal 2-0, of course. Um, Arsenal having another good uh, period against a decent team, um, as they at hard want to do. And yeah, just class above. I mean, when did they last lose? Ever? Have they ever lost? <laughs> have this team ever a lost? A long time. I, Genuinely a really long time, I think. I can't even click that far back. No, just it's just sensational. Um, uh, the fact that they, I'm I'm fine with being wrong um, about their, you know, them them not having a chance, and they and they're doing this to entertain us. I mean, obviously Palace had their say in it um, because we're great and didn't concede to Man City twice this season. <laughs> Only teams do yeah, it. For, uh, yeah, on yeah. behalf of all neutrals, thank you for that because fully back on all all because Palace managed oh, yeah. to do that. You know? I can't I can't take all the credit, Ian. <laughs> You know, as much as I would like to. <laughs> Oscar, will you admit now that Mikel Arteta is a good manager? <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, Arteta check. Yeah. If you look at only between the 47th and 63rd minute, not including corners taken in a southward direction, yeah, he's an excellent manager. <laughs> okay, because, you, you know, the only three matches they've lost at home in the league this season have been mm-hmm. to Man City, Liverpool and Chelsea. Feels fair enough. Which, that's fair. like... That's the level. We we joked, always joked about Arsenal and the Wenger like fourth place in the FA Cup. Like they're not getting the FA Cup this year, but if they lock out fourth place, that's huge. Yeah, they haven't had Champions League in eight years. None of us had had them anywhere near fourth in the predictor league. I'm sure. No, of course not. Why would you? I mean, I updated it earlier, but I forgot to check that. But uh, spoiler alert for later in the pod. Um, yeah, no, no one did. Everyone had like Man United fourth or maybe Tottenham fourth for some reason, Jeff. Um, <laughs> you know, the top three picked itself, basically. But I, I, do you I want, really so think... So do you want my actual take on Arteta? Yeah. I think that he has had enough time to see enough young players develop and have been playing his way and so developed into the best version of his system that he could have. So it's a long game. I think it's a, it was a, it's working. It, look, it looks like it's working. Keep doing the same thing for three years, and at some point you'll stumble upon the group of players that it will work for. Or it just takes three years to build it. But yeah, or he or he needed three years to build it. Fair and enough. he needed to get rid of people, you know, for for multiple reasons. He needed to get rid of certain players, or, and and for for be that for finances or their attitude or you know former club captains and. God knows Arsenal have had a lot of them. Who knew, man? Who knew Obama Yang was the linchpin <laughs> and keeping Arteta down all along? Mm. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> the millstone round his neck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, Mar- Arteta's doing a good job. Arteta's doing a good job. He's clearly gotten better over time and it has probably crossed the threshold where I begrudgingly have to admit that he's doing a good job for a sustained period of time. They're still only fifth mm-hmm. unexpected. So everybody calm down a little bit. Yeah, but they were really shit at the beginning of the year, and I think yeah. they were so shit, it's still skewing the numbers. I know, but they're um, still pretty far down from Tottenham, who also were shit for a period and have gotten much better under Conte. Oh, and Liverpool haven't lost in the league since December 28th, just to go back to that. Oh, yeah, Leicester. Remember Leicester? Oh, I haven't heard that name in years. <laughs> Leicester, what did Leicester do these days? Uh, Leicester. Hmm. Probably lose, I don't know. They suck. No, they beat no, Brentford. Brentford. There we go. Oh, you can tell how focused Oscar is that he hasn't given us any XG so far this week. And so yeah. I know Sam Danby will be happy about that. Um, <laughs> I'm really upset. You know, we finally had Christian Eriksen back and now he got COVID. Yeah, he's got COVID. Why does society hate joy? <laughs> You're it's because he went to England. Person. He gets back to yeah. England and immediately everything's a bummer. <laughs> 
Um, do you guys care about Leicester though? Like, do you have takes on Leicester actually, or Brentford it's, for that it's matter? Impossible. It's impossible to have takes on Leicester. Who, uh, yeah. Who knows what Leicester are? What I, I had them. Fi- I, I realized today uh, again. Spoiler for Predictor League later. Um, I, I had them in fifth again. Uh, That's yeah. That's high. <laughs> yeah. That Not based high. on last year. They spent. They spent. Remember the stat. For two seasons in a row, they spent 97% yeah. of the time in the top four that seems mad. and did not get Champions League <laughs> both times. Yeah. That was their chance. They, you know what? They went from relegation team to winning the title, winning an FA Cup. They can go back down now. They got their like moments of glory, both domestic possible. Is this regression to the mid-table mean, is it? Yeah, yeah. Fuck off. You did, you yeah. did your thing. Get out of here now. Okay. Go away. <laughs> That's what I think. Fuck off to the mid-table, Leicester. <laughs> they still win the Conference League. That's the one everyone wants, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Brendan barely knew about. Yeah, yeah. Them and uh, yeah. Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> no, Barcelona are one above. They're in the Europa League. Come yeah, on now, yeah, give yeah. them a bit of credit. No, that's, I guess that's West Ham this this year. Anyway, that's their ticket to the Champions League, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, it's the only way they're getting it because they're fucking yeah. it in the league and they're they all are. getting injured. <laughs> well, they're yeah. absolutely knackered. They are so tired. Shall we uh, then take it here to Tottenham 3, West Ham 1. This one's for all the hams. Tottenham <laughs> 2.4 to West's 0.6. I believe it would be Tottenham ham. <laughs> yes, correct. I'm sorry. Um, this was good for Spurs insofar as it kept their small chances, and not even that small anymore, uh, of top four alive. They are at 25% to Arsenal's 67, so decidedly in Arsenal's favor. But once again, that comparison to Man City maintains City are 62, Arsenal are 67, Tottenham 25, Liverpool 38. So Liverpool better than Tottenham in that regard. But this is like, if they had not pulled out this result, they, these percentages would be very different. It's just really hard to know at the minute what stage of the spinning wheel of Tottenham Hotspur we're at. <laughs> it, it's kind of like a wheel of fortune. Like, is a bankrupt coming round? Am I going to get, like, big money? What is going to happen? Like, you know, every spin is equal. Every spin is the same. But it's just what outcome we get. Is Antonio Conte going to say it's the best group of players he's ever worked with? <laughs> is Antonio Conte going to say they're all a piece of shit? You know, <laughs> I just I just don't really know. And it and it it should be fun, but it, it's kind of weirdly. I didn't think Tottenham could stress me out this much because I just want to. I just kind of want to know, and it really shouldn't affect me. But it, it's just like, like, are they going to lose like two nil to Newcastle? <laughs> I think they might lose 2-0 to Newcastle after the international break. I mean, that's definitely in play. Newcastle are unstoppable these days. The juggernauts. Got got beaten by 10-man Everton, but yeah, <laughs> unstoppable. <laughs> unstoppable in a game that had 18 minutes of added time. Uh, was that the game where the guy tied himself to the goalpost? Yeah, yeah, it was. Have we, We've not mentioned that yet. How are no. we 47 minutes in and we haven't <laughs> mentioned people zip-tying themselves to goalposts? Anything to not have to watch Everton, right? Yeah, I don't know. That game was pretty fun and chaotic. It was just like, it was it was kind of fun and reminiscent of a Steve Bruce Newcastle just to l- watch them play <laughs> and absolutely somehow play a team that's more abject than them. Um, and it was just like wave against rock, just nothing, nothing, nothing. And then Alex Iwobi scores in the 97th minute. It's, it's that, you know? That's Wheel of Fortune shit, that is. <laughs> Okay, that's Wheel of Fortune. Um, don't ask Eddie Howe about Saudi Arabia. Um, <laughs> never. Never. Yeah, Tottenham Hotspur, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's been right scattergun tonight, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, you know, we're back. This is this is what we're about, baby. Um, as Oscar would say, Kane, three assists. That was good in fantasy football. Um, Sonny, a couple of goals. <laughs> that was good. Zuma, own goal. That's what you get, you prick. Always good to see. Yeah. Yep. Always mm-hmm. good to see. Um, before we completely move on from the soccer, we should mention, go back for honorable mention in the FA Cup, because, uh, one yeah. of our dear, go for it, Chuck. What, what why are yeah. we, uh, why are we, do- why, why are we doing this? Because we, um, want to make them suffer a little bit more. Uh, no, it was, it was quite a shame. I think, you know, we, we mentioned obviously Chelsea getting through, but. You know, they had the trip up to Middlesbrough after they um, asked that no fans be allowed to attend. That was a thing. I know you Chuck, guys talked you, about that the this week. Sporting integrity must be retained. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Sorry. Um, it just, <laughs> just completely... fuck us, honestly. I I loved it. Oh, my God. The, <laughs> of course the you sheer... loved it. Yeah. 
audacity, the cheekiness. But oh you my loved God. it. For, you loved it for the right reasons, Oscar. It was absolutely outrageous, and that's what that's the big, correct. What a fucking banter moment! Oh my God, that was read by at least four different levels of exactly. people, and they all just went, "Yeah, that'll be all right." Exactly, <laughs> high level individuals. You would have thought, you know, who were who were on boards or whatever. I don't know, but then, and then two cool just comes out the next day and goes, "No, I didn't approve yeah, that. They we definitely have shouldn't have done that. Yeah. They shouldn't have done that." <laughs> No fucking shit. I mean, who's going to yell at him? We don't exist. <laughs> That's it. He's yeah. got total autonomy now, which is absolutely hilarious. He can hilarious. do whatever he wants, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I did, uh, apart from, you know, mentioning obviously earlier Tuchel's massive success in cup competitions, I thought Borough might have been able to get something out of out of that game, but um, Chelsea put put that to bed after about 20 minutes <laughs> mm. uh, going 2-0 up so that was a shame um, and and you know we need to give a shout out to Nottingham Forest I think uh, equally because uh, Patreon producer Patreon I believe maybe I'll check the list later um, Mark, <laughs> definitely <laughs> Mark Daffin um, he he supports Nottingham Forest and we don't want to let him um, get away with it and reliving a little bit of pain. Um, but they, <laughs> you know, they gave a really, really good account of themselves apart from the absolute sitters that they missed, um, the one-on-ones. And really, you know, it, although it was by Liverpool standards a, a B team, uh, it was not a bad team. Uh, but by by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> no, um, a B team with Van Dyke and Van uh, Dyke, Firmino, Canate, Jota, Jota yeah. Um, yeah, mad. Oh. But um, y- y- Jurgen Klopp getting a few backhanded compliments in there, saying, "Oh, you know, it was like a European night here," and I believe they used to have some of those. Um, oh. just, a, just a bit of a dig, just a bit, just enough of a dig. Um, but no, they 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 really were. They were really behind them, and, they and it was great. The forest? I, I think there is dating back from that time. Um, so I think it's kind of an, an older generation of fan would probably have that. Because Forrest won back-to-back European trophies? Yep. Yes. Yes, yeah, in yep. the 60s or 80s or something. Brian Clough, right? Are we are we just saying random things associated with Nottingham Forest? Am I correct? Uh, Was that somewhat... I'm, I am, yes, because I'm hoping that it is associated. Brian Clough, Brian Clough managed Nottingham Forest, yes. Yes! I know a manager <laughs> of Nottingham Forest. What the fuck world are we living in? That's that is incredible. True, actually, yeah, yeah. European Cup, 78-79. 78-79. So, yeah, you're, so you're talking this, the era when Liverpool were big as well, so... Mm. Yeah, exactly. There was there was a uh, probably a rivalry just from both being successful teams at the time. Ah, that would be what Klopp remembers well and is drawing on for his backhanded comments. Didn't didn't realize the city of Nottingham existed apart from that time I watched Robin Hood. Um, mm-hmm. I believe I might be paraphrasing there. Good times. It is a shame that obviously all of the big teams, yes, I include Palace in that, didn't get uh, drawn together in the quarterfinals. So, um, you know, we we sadly didn't get anything more than than the best four teams in England um, as the semi final. <laughs> I will die TM. on this fucking hill. And while we talk about who are the best teams, who are the best picks, let's roll it back to something that if you are a new listener, you'll have an absolutely no context <laughs> or care about. It's the predicted league league of predictions where i do an impromptu jingle and maybe pretend i recorded it because they're so consistent and great and they kind of follow the same tune and beat people gave us predictions at the start of the season where they thought the 20 teams would finish and everyone was really fucking wrong um yeah predict league really wrong yeah, so wrong. Very we, wrong. I had a look at mine today and I was like, fuck I, I have no idea what mine says. I'm very curious. So, so it works like, works like golf scores, uh, if you weren't sure. Basically, every position you're away from uh, the, the correct placement of the team currently uh, gets you a point, and low points is good. Um, I mean, at the minute, our best quote unquote scorer is 46. Um, which is quite a way away, like two and a bit places. Mm. I think I'm sure Ian, you got like twenty something the first year. Anyway, but yeah, I think so. What I will say at the minute, like I have, I didn't include these in the actual rankings of it, but I went on uh, five thirty eight preseason their predictions. I went on to one of the betting websites and got their ranks, and okay. the Ath- Athletic did an aggregate. Uh, between like 20 something 30 writers i believe um and the best one out of those three which is the 538 predictions at this point is also 46 points right now wow so it's actually just that 
people that listen to us are equally great as people that literally get paid for this shit. Statistical modelling, yeah. Statistical modelling. So, uh, I mean, a quick kind of summary. Um, yeah, there's there's some very bad scores in there. I won't uh, wail on those people. Uh, Finley Stimson. Finley Stimson, 62 points. Hmm. Okay. Equal, though, with uh, Oscar, Jeff Pedder, <laughs> Dave Matteo, Johnny Worthington, uh, Lynn Hammer Clammer as well. <laughs> Um, so you're all down there. Congratulations. He's he's 11. Um, <laughs> where's uh, Safira Gold? Oh, my iPad didn't work. There Thank it is. you. Um, <laughs> she's up in 52 with her brother, Matthew Gold. Down in Very 60 nice. uh, with Patreon <laughs> producer Nate Whittam. Um, Ian, you and I are on 56 with Andy Pempres. He's from Sutton. Um, mm. And do, 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 let's go up to, I mean, let's look at the top three ish. Uh, Tom Townley, you specifically requested this for a reason. So, congratulations on fucking up this segment. Uh, please direct <laughs> your um, letters of complaint to Tom Townley. He is on 50 points and in joint fourth with Stephen Dalton. Um, don't remember who that is. Top three. Papa Dalton. That's other Oscar's <gasps> dad. Oh, that's Oscar's dad, isn't it? Where's Oscar yeah. Dalton? Oscar Dalton, oh, 33rd on 66 points. Um, so Papa, oh, Papa Dalton, who probably again doesn't know that he's entered and he won last year, I think, um, <laughs> is in fourth with Tom Townley. He might listen. He Third might listen. place, yeah, maybe. Maybe just check in what his son's listening to. Um, <laughs> Van Damme, Sam, Bam, Bam, Blam, Bam, Whoa, Black Betty, Bam, Blam, Whoa, Black Betty, Bam, Blam, <laughs> Sam Damby had a child, Bam, Blam, the whole thing gone wild. Sam Damby is third on 48 points and third. the top two... <laughs> Uh, well, top one, linked, uh, equal points, John OG. And in first place, uh, Alex Sampson, Patreon, man who lives in Spain and knows nothing about football. Um, congratulations, <laughs> you can become a writer for The Athletic. The Athletic. Yeah. yeah, so um, I'll probably forget to update that until about three weeks, until we finish our end of season. Um, but that's it, Prediction League. Yeah, jazz hands. Phew. The three of us are back together. Yes, indeed. It can mean only one thing. It can mean... Well, it could mean several things. Um, uh, you know, we've all got alibis now, which is good. Um, but <laughs> <coughs> it means we got a quiz. we got a bloody quiz. Yeah. Woo! Quiz, quiz, quiz. Um, uh, no jingles. I realised uh, I did look through children's toys this afternoon. Uh, all the noisy ones have been put up in the loft. You know, that was a, a targeted <laughs> thing, maybe. Um, uh, yeah, what, what's a pun? Uh, what's a pun I can do about this one? Uh, this quiz is called Men Behaving Badgley. Uh, that'll do. It's about badges. It's about club badges. Um, oh, I put in loads of effort for this. I put in loads of effort. Um, no effort. What I'm going to do, or maybe Badgley Drawn Boy. Badgley, oh, I like it. Badgley Drawn Boy. Yep, yeah, that's better. Basically, you don't need to write anything down for this one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to badly describe with as little detail as possible, fact by fact, that I'm going to make up off the top of my head a <laughs> Premier League club's crest. Okay. Um, and you're going to have to try and guess what it is. Um, you can just say your own name to stop me during any of the facts. <laughs> okay. um, but if you get it wrong, then the other person gets a free go. You can only guess once per fact. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Uh, how many do you want to do? Six? Seven. <laughs> okay, yeah, seven. <laughs> Come on, you set me up for that. Too easy. Seven, so it's the first of four. Um, so uh, let me find a badge. Um, okay. <laughs> this is insane. This is the most insane quiz you've done. I'm yeah. very excited for this. Where, where are we at on the scores, by the way? Is it, uh, yeah. Are we yeah, tied? There, there are scores. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, you wanted the actual scores. Okay. Uh, Ian's on yeah. nine. Oscar's on eight. Maybe. Uh, no oh, one can no. remember that far away. <laughs> um, all right. Which one? Let's do... Okay, this one. Uh, so, first badge. Um, it's got words on it. Uh, Oscar. Oh, my yeah, God. <laughs> uh, Manchester United. No. Ian, do you want to guess? Free guess? No? Is that a free guess, is it? Yeah, why not? Uh, West Ham. No, um, uh, it's not green. Uh, well, that's not fair. <laughs> the fuck am I supposed to know? <laughs> well, well, Oscar, you can't see green, so it means that if you can see the badge, then it's probably one of them. That's not how that works. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> that kind uh, of blindness works, right? Newcastle, they're the ones in black and white. So no, I'm it's, say got a sh- it's got a shape on it that's like, you know, the things what um, a knight holds? It's got one of them on it. A lance. Yeah. Some, uh, oh, uh, oh, it's got, uh, it's Oscar, got some Oscar, leaves. Oscar, Oscar. Here, go on. Brentford. No. <sighs> uh, it's got some leaves on it. There's a date. I have no fucking clue. Uh, it's got some white on it. Uh, Oscar. Li- go on then. Southampton? Nope. Oh, shit, that's, <laughs> that's genuinely what I was about to go with. Um, yeah. I'm moving on. You're taking too long. Uh, it's blue. Everton. Yay! Oscar gets a point. <laughs> it is Everton's badge. Everton's badge is a blue shield. It says nil satis nisi optimum. That means we won't accept anything but the best. Oh, a shield, a shield. Like. It's a shield, right. a shield like what a right. knight carries, and it has the date yeah. 1878 on it. Um, okay. I can only imagine that's the last time they were good. Next one. <laughs> uh, circle. It's a circle. Uh, Oscar. Yeah, go on. Chelsea. Fucking dickhead. Yes, yeah, Chelsea. Oh, for yeah. fuck's sake. <laughs> Come on, I have that literally within, without moving my head particularly, I can see it in four different places, five different places. <laughs> Fucking hell. There we go. Right. Uh, two nil. All right. Uh, this one. Uh, there's a ball on it. Uh, Oscar. Yeah. Tottenham. No. <sighs> uh, there is, I mean, it's not got any words or anything. On it. Oh, it might do. Yeah, uh, Ian. Yeah, go on. Norwich. Yeah, two one. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> that, that just says it. Uh, like Oscar will get Chelsea. I'll get the fucking relegated shit munchers. <laughs> <laughs> it's about our levels, isn't it? Uh, this one. Uh, there's a star. A star. Star. A star. It says the word prepared on it. I don't think it's like a you know like a cooking show or anything kind of prepared. Prepared for what? Whom knows? Uh, it's not got a bird on it. Uh, Oscar. Yeah. We- West Brom. West, West Brom. Brom. They're not right. in the Premier, Premier League. League teams. <laughs> They're a bird f- team, though. <laughs> you fucking dickhead. First of all, <laughs> first of all, at the start, I said Premier League teams. They right? were once upon a time. You did not specify this right? year. And second of all, <laughs> I just said not a bird on it. And you specifically guessed West Brom because it has a bird on it. <laughs> 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 There's a lot yes. going wrong with that. Yeah, uh, it's got four colours. Again, not I'm getting fair. proper hung up on this. Pre- uh, Aston Villa. Correct. Ding. Fuck, Two. Was... Four colours on the Villa badge. Yeah, claret, blue, yellow, and uh, a little white star for some reason, and it says prepared. Uh. Um, oh, I am looking at pictures, though, that I got from a Sporkle quiz, so there's no words <laughs> on a lot of them. So um, there we go. Uh, next one. Was that two two. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the next one has a. Uh, uh, it's not a pennant. It looks like a pennant, it's like uh, like the Icelandic flag. It's not got Bjork on it. Okay. Uh, palace. Uh, nope. It's not a bird. It's not. It's not a bird. You might think so, but nope. Uh, a chess piece. There's a chess piece on it. That's weird, isn't it? It looks like a mermaid coming out the top. <laughs> What the fuck are you doing? Oh, it's really weird. I'm looking at a picture. I'm looking at a picture, guys. Um, I'm going to guess one that I don't know their badge at all. Oscar. Burnley? Negative. Not uh, Burnley. I have no idea what Burnley's badge looks like, so... Ian to go? Ian to go? I can't... A chess piece with a... No. But no. <laughs> no guess. No. no okay. Yes bird or no bird? There are, there are two <laughs> flippers. Flippers? Fins. Fins? Tails. Tails. The f- Fuck has a fish like a fin, like a fish. Yeah, a bit weird. Are you fucking lying? Little blue and, and, and like a blue. I feel blue like you're ribbon. pranking us. Blue ribbon at the bottom. Blue ribbon I... at the bottom. You remember? You remember the thing? The thing I said before with the guys, the 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 men in the armor. The men in the armor. They hold one of them sometimes. Probably did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one of them on it. Yeah. <laughs> No the thing is, all is. I can think of is things that don't are nothing like that. Right, so, so I, it's got for some yeah. right for some reason for some reason it has some weird hybrid mythical creature on it. <laughs> what? They're like it's the name of a real animal. Like there's a real animal that has this name, but like the animal that has this name isn't the animal that it sounds like it. It's the name of. <laughs> 
so I'm so lost. Uh, um, Oscar. Yeah. Newcastle. Correct. Oh, for fuck. <laughs> Get out of here. Why? Can you explain all of those clues, yeah. please? Because I'm so <laughs> okay, lost. So the Newcastle badge. The Newcastle badge has a, a flag, like a like a pennant, like a triangular flag at the top, which is in the wind. It's got a okay. blue background on one half with a red cross, and the rest is a red. And it looks like some sort of mermaid is holding it, whilst coming out of the top of a rook. Uh, like a chess piece rook <laughs> castle. I have never looked at the Newcastle crest. It's got apparently. a shield. It's got a shield on it, and the two flippers, mythical creatures, creatures that you know. <laughs> if you said the name of a real creature, it's like two horses, but with the tails of uh, like a, a fish. <laughs> this sounds like it, uh, the an Newcastle acid badge trip. has two I sea swear horses to God, on it. You could be making this up, and I would like have no difference. You could put anything in there right now, and it'd be like, I look guess. it up. <laughs> look it up. Look I, it up. Oh my god! Two rampant seahorses, but imagine like if a real horse adapted to living in the sea. That's what it would look like, but if, it wouldn't be a seahorse. If you horse. know what the hell the deal is with the Newcastle crest, <laughs> please write in. We need to know. I'm not googling it, but if you know, please let us help us out here. Oh my god, that's incredible! Maybe. Wow. Uh, so oh, what's that? So three, two, three, two, three, two, two, three, two, three, two, Oscar. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Uh, next one. Next one. Might be the last one. Uh, Pentagon. Who has a fucking Pentagon? Pentagon. Who has a Pentagon? That's weird, isn't it? And like a, a uh, uh, Oscar. Yeah. Wolves. Uh, Ooh, maybe, uh, but that's not the one I'm shout. looking at. Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. No, it's not. Uh, three, one, two. Yeah, three colors. Half of Again, it. Again, still not a fair clue. <laughs> <laughs> I must object for the third time, sir. <laughs> Look, you've got color glasses. Um. Oscar can see one of these colours. Uh, two of these colours. <laughs> two of these colours Oscar can see. And uh, half the pentagon is in half a colour, which uh, is the colour of the bar on the top. Oscar, 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 well, Oscar. Hang on, hang on. Was Ian's uh because he no, actually wanted to go, say his go, name, I guess? No, no. I, I just forgot my name. No, go with Oscar. Okay. Uh, Southampton. Uh, negative. Uh, Ian. Oh, all right. Watford. Watford! Tick. Ding. Uh, yeah, I picked a W team. That was more of a disadvantage than the colour thing, Oscar. Let's face it. Yeah, 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 fair enough, fair enough. I never had a chance. Well, you said Wolves, and you've already said West Brom earlier, so and you've said West Ham, so this was the only one that was left. Uh, fair apart enough. Apart from Wickham. Right, three, three all. Three all in the best game ever. Uh, right, let me pick. TM. <laughs> this is incredible. I'm loving this so much. Right, last one. This is the decider. Fire. fire fire there's fire on it there's <laughs> fire there's fire and like a, it, oh uh, Oscar uh, yeah Man United no well maybe oh. but no not the one the, I'm the, looking the at the devils I thought oh, yeah. the devils it's got a year fire. on it there's a year there's a year uh, some other words uh, like an aged wrought iron gate pattern on the top well uh, uh, Oscar yeah West Ham nah uh, Ian <sighs> Liverpool. Yeah, they have a gate. That makes sense. Play the music! Yeah. Duh, duh, duh. Yeah. Uh, the Liverpool, they have like yeah. flames and uh, and a like a fancy gate pattern on the top. I enjoyed the logic of the red devil and fire though, Oscar. That was a good guess. Thank you. Thank guess. you. Logic was not the strategy to win this game, Ian. In case <laughs> Just shouting teams. <laughs> Look, I said circle and you got Chelsea. Right? Yeah, that's you true. Know, yeah. d- Fair enough. Let Fair enough. It that's not true. Be said. Um, we are in an international break. Boo. We normally don't do anything. We say we're going to do something, but we do. But there's also three Palace players in the England squad, so I'll probably end up watching them. Maybe even go to Wembley. Uh, who <laughs> fucking knows? It'll be a Club England member by the end of the week. 100%. I'll be there rubbing shoulders with Jeff Hurst. He's still he's still going, isn't he? Sure. Yeah, he's still sure. going. Okay. Yep. Yep. And, you know, we do have some World Cup qualifiers. There's lots of drama in there. Obviously, Russia were meant to be in there. They're not. They're gone now. Um, oh, I forgot to mention as well. They they lost their appeal with the Court of Arbitration for Sport for not getting kicked out of the World Cup. Yeah. Um, so unlucky, you pricks. And uh, what at least one of Italy and Portugal might not qualify for the World Cup, which would be great. Um, in on many levels, I guess. Um, that's what you get for winning the Euros in our back garden. Um, <laughs> is there anything else? Is that it? 
I have something actually. Oh, okay. This will be my last episode for a few weeks again. Oh. Um, because the clocks are changing, <laughs> so we are no longer getting that extra hour. <laughs> well, uh, isn't daylight savings uh, time going to become permanent or something? This, maybe we could. Uh, maybe Joe Biden's going to save Miles Offside. That's what he's. That's what he promised when he was campaigning. He said, "Well, I'll save Miles Offside," and that's why he got elected. Really, <laughs> got my vote <laughs> exactly. But. The reason I say that is because while the last time I was out for a little while, I was missing you fine gentlemen, um, and I found myself browsing our podcast page. Um, and you know how, Ian, you're always telling me to check reviews in case we get a nice review? Yeah. Uh, I definitely do that. But, um, <laughs> but I, found a, I found a really nice review from uh, as timely as November 10th. <laughs> Um, so thank you right. to the person. Oh, oh fucking hell. Four months, yeah. We're good at... We are... Four years in, we are good at this. Four <sighs> years. You wouldn't think it. You know, six months late, but we're going to read out this review because I thought it was really funny. Really good. So um, here it is. This is from Mike W. 2008 who maybe is a Patreon? Unclear. Definitely. Um, it's Mike Wellman, surely. It's, just, it's gotta, gotta be Mike Wellman. gotta be, right? I'm assuming. Yeah. It's gotta be. Well, here's, here's his wonderful review. This just in, a soccer podcast starring two Brits and one American is pretty great. Do you love your soccer news with a side of analytics, FPL commentary, bad jokes, strangely constructed soccer quizzes, and schadenfreude at the misfortunes of Man U? This podcast might be for you. Do you want to hear the latest soccer news from a panel that calls out racism and stupidity in the sport for what it is? This podcast might be for you. Do you want a podcast that has exactly 5% coverage of what's happening in the Championship League? This podcast might be for you. 5%. Are you a fan of Brighton or Liverpool? Please listen. This is definitely a podcast for you. <laughs> <laughs> now again. Seriously, this is a great show and f the best for Prem fans out there. So thank you, Mike. Uh, six months late, sorry, but yeah. lovely review and we do appreciate it. It's a, it is a great review and, and thank you, Mike. But what I did enjoy is that both me and Chuck furrowed our brows at the bit where he said bad jokes. <laughs> We yeah. both did exactly the same <laughs> movement. <laughs> we just went, hmm, not a bit I, I, What was the bit about quizzes? I, cl I closed the tab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, thanks, Mike. And any reviews will be greatly received. And if you send them in now, then we'll probably get to them for the season opener next year, I imagine. Yep. Yeah, maybe, because yep, exactly. the season will start early because of the World Cup in the winter and all oh, of that God. kind of jazz. Yeah. Yay! Football, it will never end! <laughs> Run until your legs bleed! Liverpool have got eight games in 24 days or something stupid now. Like, why? Why have we done that? Make the season... Why wouldn't they spread them out? Why are they going to do eight games all in one day? Stupid. Stupid guys. Um, it, you can tell it's been a while because Ian, we've, we've started to taper off and Ian still hasn't pressed the button. No, he has not picked up on it. There it is. Thanks, mate. No worries. I appreciate it. Well, thank you very much uh, for listening. If you made it this far, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, uh, thanks, I guess, in a way. <laughs> um, say goodbye, Oscar Puente, for a while. Sublight Lounge. Uh, okay, and say goodbye, Ian Stimson. Bye. And shout out to our producers, Johnny Worthington, Nate Witt, and Mark Davin, Sam Danby, Jeff, and Andy Pemprace. He's from Sutton. <laughs> <laughs>